thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, this is another weekly Kettle uh, presentation. I want to start by saying thank you to our faculty throughout the system for making our weekly Kettle meetings a, a, a resounding success. Uh, we have uh, faculty joining us uh, every week for an hour to discuss faculty development, faculty issues. We have some sessions where you can vent. Yes, that is a thing too, about your challenges uh, in teaching and learning and dealing with students and research. So again, thank you everyone for joining. Today we have the one and only uh, Michael Barber. He is from uh, Toro University, uh, California, um, Director of Faculty Development and Professor of Instructional Design for the College of Ed and um, Health Sciences. However, he plays a major role at the university. He's a keeper of all things, badges and micro-credentials. He is the coordinator of the micro-credentials at Toro Initiative. We thank him for taking up the strategic initiative and making it as big and bold as he has at the university. Now, how does this apply to you? It applies to you not just from a classroom level, as in what can you do in terms of badges and micro-credentials in your classroom? What can you do with badges and micro-credentials in your respective schools when it comes to faculty, staff? What can you do with student-run programs, which may be a co-curricular activity, which could be other support services that the university provides to our students can you offer them workshops where they can get themselves, where these workshops can be badged? Uh, students have a sense of pride that they have done something and built some skills. You can have these workshops in person. They can be online. They can be on Canvas. And several of us throughout the university are using badges and micro-credentials um, to support our faculty, staff, and students. So you're going to learn about all these things today. And thank you, Michael, for doing this once again. Oh, not a problem, not a problem at all. So let me start uh, by sharing my screen. There we go. And I want to make sure I've got the chat dropped there so I can see if anything pops up there. Perfect. All right, so um, as Raymond mentioned, I'm the coordinator for the micro-credentials at Toro initiative, and that's a, a system-wide uh, initiative. So it is one that um, uh, is applicable regardless of what particular campus you're on, and uh, one that uh, you can take advantage of uh, regardless of um, where you happen to be located or what particular discipline that you have. So uh, I've got the session today divided up into two, possibly three parts. Um, and I'm going to focus upon the formal badging and micro-credential program that we have here within the Toro University system. Um, depending upon what time we've got, we might take a little bit of a look at gamification at the end. Um, but basically, I want to you know focus upon essentially where the, the folks in and um, actually it was Daniel Thompson and our IT team in New York designed this lovely logo for me. So this is the essentially the program that I, I wanna talk about today. And the first thing that I wanna do is talk a little bit about what badges are and how you can tell what is a, a badge in just some random image. So um, how many of you have actually gone through, because this seems to be one of the more popular ones, the uh, any of the um, Canvas and Zoom slash Yuja badges in the system? So if you could say uh, using the reactions button down at the bottom or through your hands option, um, you know, give me a thumbs up or a, a what, uh, well, whatever emoji strikes your fancy. Uh, basically, if you've got one or more of these badges at this stage, and I'll give you a second to do that because I know it takes a, and they slowly pop down. So as I'm seeing them, 
All right. At the height, I think I saw, I'm counting here more as they're coming through. About 15 to 18 by the looks of it, looking at the different folks that are shot, shooting up there. So um, we're looking at about a third of our audience, maybe, uh, you know, which is a, a good thing. So, um, yes, these are probably, well, they're one of the first ones that the, the system has put forward, sort of widely speaking. Um, and it's, um, hmm, sorry, uh, thank you, Rima, for doing that. I'm looking at the chat as it's scrolling through. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll handle the chat so that you don't have to multitask. No worries. Um, so as you're going through, um, yeah, so Rima, if you have questions along the way, just drop them. Actually, it's a good reminder. Um, if it's a technical question or something about Kettle in general, um, Rima will take care of it along the way. If it's a presentation-focused question, I'll try to either answer it as I'm going along or file it away for the end. So as you get questions, please raise them because it might be easier to answer them as we're going. Um, so this is the one that I think most folks have gotten used to simply because the folks in the Department of Online Ed were they raised uh you know they they brought this about during the pandemic when we first made the transition um over into remote learning and uh, because of that dramatic shift that we had a lot of folks needed these skills quickly and this was a, a good way of, of doing it it's also a good example of gamification because as you can see um i don't know how many of you are are like myself when you're um, doing these types of things. But as I went through, the second that I got the bronze one, I, I needed to get the silver one because, well, the silver is a step up. As soon as I got the silver one, I had to get the gold one because the gold is a step up. And regardless of, you know, what my colleagues had and, and that kind of thing, because, you know, I'm just a competitive type of guy myself, um, you know, I had to when they released the platinum one, which um, they announced for a bit and then finally released. I had to get that one as well. And um, that sense of, of you know, challenging oneself is a big aspect of gamification, which is um, something you probably see in your students as well, if you've done any sort of fun activities with them in the classroom. Um, but getting back to, to badges and, and what they are. So I guess the first question is, and, and you can drop your answers in the chat, um, but what's the difference between when you see something like this compared to when you see something like that in someone's say email signature or on someone's website or on someone's LinkedIn profile, um, you know, for you as a say potential employer, a colleague looking at a prospective student or an alumni, um, you know, how would you know the difference between these two other than sort of the derogatory way I've named them in the example? I'll give you a second to drop some things in the chat. And I see some people already putting in there. Um, some folks aren't sure. Other folks look at the fact that one of them is branded with an institution. Um, and, you know, that is true. Um, one is branded. And, um, you know, in theory, you could go to that institution's website and try to find whether or not that badge was a legit badge. Um, in our case, I'll be perfectly honest with you and say that, about a half to maybe even two thirds of the badges that we offer, you'd never find on any of our websites. So how about when you see something like this? So this is uh, an email that um, I got from one of our adjunct faculty who um, actually was doing some badging from a gamification perspective. And you can see as part of his signature file there, he's got those uh, four badges that he's got there, uh, two of which are Toro ones, uh, one of which is uh, Amazon World Services, and the other one is Proofpoint. So two very you know large legitimate companies. But how do you know that these are, are not just legitimate badges, but that this particular adjunct faculty member was legitimately awarded these badges? And again, I'll pause for a minute to allow folks to drop them into the um, chat because you know if the logo or the you know using the um using the official name of the the company is, is one of the things all these ones have them and if you were to compare that to say something from my own linkedin portfolio which is what just showed up there on the right hand side 
Um, you can see I've got one there that's the, actually the platinum level one. Um, so you can see it's Zoom Canvas Skills Platinum Level 4. So that's that platinum level badge from a minute ago. Um, it's issued by Canvas Credentials, comma Badger. Um, by the same token, you've got another one there that's a digital learning, learning symposium. Um, I don't know why they put learning there twice, but they did from an organization, Canny Learn. So, yes. And as you're seeing through what's coming in the chat, you know, a lot of people, when they look at these, you know, aren't sure what the differences are. Um, a lot of them, you know, it's difficult to tell. Um, like, as an example, this badge right here that you see, Zoom, Canvas, and Skills, Platinum one, just by the way LinkedIn brought it in, you would never know that it's actually this Platinum badge right here with the Toro Institution. You know, and I used the, when I went to the system, you know, when I went to the, the Toro system, there's a little button there that says share and it says add to your LinkedIn profile. And I did all of those things, but yet you don't see the institutional logo there. You just see a Canvas logo. Now, Canvas logo is not bad because it's it's um, Canvas, but hey, you know, it's, it's not Toro University. It doesn't have that cachet. Um, you know, so if you're looking at those, one of the big differences is like if I were to click on this badge here, oops, nothing would happen in an email signature. Whereas if I were to click on the show credential option here, or if someone had it embedded into any of their social media platforms or even a static website, it would actually bring me to the page where the person had earned it. And you can see, in my case, it would say I earned it or you earned it. Um, if you were looking at this, so if you were the one checking on me, it would say Michael Barber earned this badge on. And it tells you the date that I actually earned it. So apparently I didn't do the platinum one until a couple of weeks ago, by the looks of it, uh, before I finished the full series. And you can see that, you know, it's been awarded by your issuer and the issuer you know, is this area over here, you know, and this is the official badge page. And you can see some key information here. Uh, one is you can see what the badge is for. So this is a faculty and staff development badge, represents all five of the different platinum ones. Um, you can see what the earning criteria is here. You can see that they've put a few tags in. Um, I'm not sure why they call it level four and it's platinum level five, but that's, well, I guess, level four because they've got bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So that would be the fourth one. You can see it was offered by the Toro Department of Online Ed. So you're starting to see some of the more formal things that are in here, and it's within a system. You can even see that bad uh, canvas has actually verified that this badge exists and that it was uh, apparently last verified today because that's when I actually went in and took the image. Um, if I wanted to go back tomorrow, all I'd have to do is click on re-verify and it would tell me that it is still a valid image. Um, you know, so that verified symbol that you see there is important when you're looking at a badge. What that essentially means is that some software that can read badges has actually gone in and looked at the coding for that badge to verify that it is truly a badge and not simply some random image that I created on the internet, that this is a badge that has that um, verification, if you will, that uses the coding that's been developed by the open badging system, which was developed in the, the 1990s. Um, now, beyond that, you have to sort of, you know, as a individual, look at what the badge is actually for. Um, so in this case, you know, it'll give you a little description of the badge up here. It'll also give you the specific earning criteria down here. And in much the same way that when we look at, say, a certificate that someone has been, the someone has received, or even when we're comparing courses from one institution to the next to determine transfer credit, you know, looking at the topics that were covered and trying to get a sense as to the depth of those topics, um, we'll give you, it's that same sort of assessment that we do as we're looking at these things. Um, so the other thing that that people are starting to, to catch on to here in the chat, as I'm seeing, you know, the idea that in theory, 
anyone can go in and create a an issuer that has a verified batch, right? All I need is the Toro logo to go in and do this. And I could create something that had that. Someone who's not associated with Toro University could go in and create something that used our logos, that created an image that they uploaded into this with our badge. Now, obviously, if we found this, we would want to, you know, make sure that they weren't doing it and probably get, you know, the, the legal and compliance folks involved and cease and desist orders and all that kind of thing. But the reality is, is that these are images that I could easily find on Google. So I could easily create this kind of badge and award it online. And that's where you get into the difference between sort of this one here and, you know, the official system that we're using with the universe that we're using as part of the micro credentials at Toro Initiative. Um, not to say that this is not official. The only reason we haven't brought these in yet is because they got started before the official program did. Uh, so we're still in the background trying to, to catch things up. So this will eventually be brought into the official system. Um, but we've got to, because the, the folks in Department of Online Ed are innovators and, and a little bit ahead of the curve on these kind of things, um, we've got to go back and, and fix up some of the um, old ones that they had uh, done before the official program got involved so we can get them as a part of this one. But if you look at these two, you can see one of the key differences and it's a difference that you probably that I highlighted with the badge. So again, here's the one that is right now an unofficial one. Um, so it's not part of our official university paid for system. And then here's the one that's part of the um, system. And, you know, while they kind of get small when you look at them side by side, if you know what you're looking for, you can see the big difference between these two right off the bat. And it's the fact that the issuer is also verified by the um, by the company that has put this together. So we use Canvas Credential, um, which is another product buying structure similar to our Canvas learning management system that um, all of you are using to either offer or support your courses. Uh, so we went with them again uh, for our badging program. And this is really what is the, the key aspect of it. And with the exception of ones that we have intention of bringing into the official system, there shouldn't be any Toro badges that use our name and logo out there that aren't part of this verified system that we have available. Um, so basically a badge is just a digital representation of a, that you've accomplished something, that you've mastered some skills, that you've learned um, a particular bit of knowledge or that um, you've demonstrated a, a specific disposition. Um, for those of you that were involved in scouts or guides as a kid, um, you're familiar with sort of the regular badges that we used to sew on that sash that we had. Well, this is basically just a digital version of that. And the only difference between the two of them is basically this coding here that makes it an official badge. So when you're looking at a badge, the key things that you're looking for, again, that description of what the badge actually is what you have to do to earn that badge. And then you're looking for those two verified marks, right? The This verified mark over here indicates that the badge has all of that coding and isn't just some random image someone created. The verified badge over here on the right-hand side, that logo there basically means that it's been done by an institution that um, knows that it is actually there. So every one of you have the ability to go in and create an issuer and make your own badges. And they'll all have this verified over here. They wouldn't have this verified over here, even if you were using the Toro logo and Toro name, because they're not a part of the branded system, not a part of the official system, if you will. Um, so when you get these badges, and this is why the coding is important, one of the things that you can do is you can share them all over the place. Um, so you can add them to your LinkedIn profile. You can see all the different social networks that you can post them to. Um, you can actually get the link that you need in order to be able to display it. And if you were to click on this HTML option here, it actually gives you the code that you could add to say your email signature so that when you clicked on the picture, so if I go back to 
um, this one right here, if they had put that in there using the HTML code, when I clicked on that, it would actually take me to the page that demonstrated that those things were there. And as you can see from the badge page, I have the ability to, well, it's not on that one. I have to find one where I actually earned it. Yeah, I didn't earn any of these badges, apparently, so I can't find them. Um, but there is an option right underneath. Um, usually, it appears right about here that basically says you can share this badge. And if I click on that, it would allow it would bring up this screen, essentially, that would allow me to share those things to different options. Um, so I've got a bunch of videos, and I'll share the link for this um, later. Uh, but all of these videos, and, and I need to redo them because you can see I'm using the old logo still, uh, give you the step-by-step -step ways in which you can share your badges. So for the third to half of you that have badges from that online ed, uh, the Zoom Canvas course, uh, you can be able to share those to all of your different um, social media options, as well as creating an open backpack that you can share all of those items in there, and I'll post that in a bit. So the other term that we get associated with badges is this idea of micro-credentials. In fact, you can see it in the name of the initiative. And essentially, a micro-credential is a sequence of things that get stacked together. And it allows you to essentially be awarded a larger item. Um, so... As a basic option, one of the things you could think about it as an analogy, if you will, is by taking two or three courses, I can be awarded a certificate. So if I take the right sequence of courses, I can be awarded a certificate uh, or I could be awarded a degree. Well, the badging equivalent to that is if I take the right sequence of courses by having those courses, then I can be automatically awarded a micro credential. Um, so that's um, one of the options that we have within the Toro system. You'll notice that none of the free options. So again, if I go back to these guys here, because they were using the unofficial system, they didn't have the ability to stack these, you know, because we could have it set up. Whereas if you got all four of these, you were automatically awarded something. Um, you know, you were automatically awarded wizard of zoom and canvas micro credential or, or I'm, horrible with thinking up names, as you can see off the top of my feet. Um, but so we aren't able to do that in the unofficial system that we've got. Um, but so when you take a bunch of these and stack them together, uh, that's what a micro credential is. So if you're again looking for an analogy that within higher ed, we can understand when you think badges, think courses, when you think um, micro credentials, think a certificate or a degree or a larger program. Now, I will be honest with you and say that these definitions aren't standardized in the United States, uh, actually aren't standardized in North America at all. Um, so different universities will use the terms differently. Uh, so some universities will use a micro-credential to describe a single learning event that you'll be awarded a badge. Um, and unfortunately, that's just the way things have developed here in North America. Uh, once you leave North America, these terms are fairly standardized. So if you're looking at um, anything coming out of Europe or Australia or Asia or those uh, other South America as well, uh, they've all signed on to a single definition. Uh, so the definitions that we're using are actually consistent with those single definitions that the rest of the world uses because, well, in the U.S. here, people just make up their own definitions for these two terms, unfortunately. Um, so... That gives you a bit of background about what badges and micro-credentials are. So I want to talk a little bit now about the formal program that we have here uh, at Toro University. So we have these different types of badges throughout the system. And um, we actually have five different tiers of badges. So the first tier of badges is uh, faculty and staff development ones. And one of the things that you'll note about these badges is the, well, the basic fact that they don't have a standardized design. So you can see these here are the ones that we use for the Zoom and Canvas course. But again, if I go back to that email signature, 
you can see this module making course here is also a Toro course. And the look and feel of that particular badge looks very different than the look and feel of these badges that we have here. Um, so one of the key parts of, of the faculty and staff development badges, because they're designed primarily for internal use, while they do have the branding on them, they don't have a standardized look and feel. Um, so you know that they are faculty development because they all sort of look a little different. Whereas all of the ones that are designed for external or external and internal use uh, all have a standardized look and feel. Uh, and you can see what that standardized look and feel looks like just by looking at these. You can see they all have that shield design. They all have the logo at the top. They all have the banner across the middle with the name of the badge in the middle. That's the standardized look and feel that we've got for the system. So looking at the badges that, that we have that have that standardized look, um, our tier two badges, so our tier one was the faculty and staff development. Our tier two badges are experiential badges. So for folks in the medical disciplines, uh, if you're familiar with CEUs, this is basically your CMUs. This is the badge-based version of a CMU um, because there's a lot of disciplines. And, you know, I'm an educator myself. I was a K-12 teacher and um, I was certified in a province where we didn't have to get CEUs to keep our certification. So for me to go to some sort of professional learning opportunity, be it a conference or a workshop or whatever, it was not really worth my time to get a CEU. There was nothing I could do with the continuing ed unit. Um, I didn't need it. It was basically a waste. Um, so for those types of instances, an experiential badge is actually quite useful. Um, so it, it's one where basically you be, uh, show up to something. Uh, there's no formal assessment, or if there is an assessment, oftentimes it tends to be something that isn't that rigorous or isn't that extensive. And basically, once you've done that, you are awarded the badge. Uh, the next level up is a skills-based badge. Um, so the skills-based badges are ones that are specifically tied to an individual skill that is in the Open Skills database. Uh, so I'm going to drop the um, link in the chat there. Um, so Lightcast has an open skills database, and this is the dominant one that's used here in North America. Uh, they have over 30,000 discrete skills in their database. And so a skills-based badge typically represents about, in many cases, less than 10 hours of learning. In some cases, it's as little as two or three hours of learning. And it's focused upon one or more discrete skills. And in order to be awarded the badge, whoever is offering the learning that's associated with the badge has to evaluate the individual's ability to do the skill. So not their ability to know the steps how to do their skill, but the actual ability to do their skill. So it's, you know, you have to evaluate them like the driver's portion of your driver's license exam, as opposed to the test portion of your driver's test. Uh, so the test portion measured your knowledge of the, your ability to drive. The actual driving portion measured your actual ability to drive. Um, so the skills-based badge would be awarded for the demonstration of the latter, that actual ability to drive. Um, the next tier up, so our tier four ones, are our non-credit badges. Um, these ones typically represent, uh, actually, I shouldn't say typically because there's a full range of them. Um, at a minimum, we're looking at about eight hours of instruction. Um, most of the ones that we've done so far are somewhere in the 10 to 20 range. Uh, we have had some non-credit badges that represent as much as 50 hours of instruction. Um, that's kind of on the high end, um, but that sort of that 10 to 20 seems to be a, a normal one. Um, basically, if you're thinking of a non-credit badge, the type of learning that tends to get associated with these non-credit badges tend to be something like a light version of um, a course, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, if you think about a three unit course as something that represents 45 hours of instruction over 15 weeks, um, you know, if the average non-credit badge is giving you about 10 to 
um, 10 to 20 hours of instruction, it's kind of like one unit of instruction that we have available. Even that five to eight hour minimum, you're looking at a third to a half of a unit of instruction. Although obviously these, because they're not credit, aren't attached to specific types, uh, you know, specific courses. Um, what we've seen with these to date, uh, in many cases, it's folks that um, have taken existing courses that we offer for credit and creating a non-credit version of that course. Um, so they've gone in and taken out some of the, the rigor in there, taken out, uh, you know, some of the the content oftentimes, uh, you know, decrease the amount of readings or the level of expectation of the learners that are there. Um, and, you know, essentially just made it a smaller course, if you will, and offered those up for non-credit. Um, now, non-credit ones are the first ones that we are able to stack within the formal system. So the experiential ones and the skills-based ones can't stack towards a micro-credential, but our non-credit courses can stack towards a non-credit micro-credential. Um, and within the system, uh, so within the Canvas credential system, they refer to stacking of badges as a pathway. Um, so once you've completed all of the badges in that pathway, you get awarded the micro-credential badge. Um, and you can see in our case, we've got sort of that gray background for our non-credit ones. Um, to qualify to be a non-credit micro-credential, uh, you have to have at least two non-credit badges. Uh, the ones we've got to date uh, range from two to five, um, and they don't have to be all. We've got several where there are four or five courses available, and the learner has to complete three or four of those courses to be awarded the micro-credential, so it gives them some options in there. Um, you can have it set up kind of like a degree where there are some required courses and then there are some electives and you have to take X number of these electives in order to uh, get the micro-credential. Uh, so you could have two required badges and then have to take one of the elective badges from these three options and that would equal up a micro-credential. In the case of a non-credit micro-credential, it needs to be at least 50 hours of work um, so if you've got two badges, these two badges here need to be at least 50 hours. Uh, many of the ones we have now are, are more than that, um, but that's sort of at a minimum. Oops, jump the page. Uh, so the top tier, the final tier are credit badges. These are ones that are actually associated with existing courses that we are currently offering. And um, they are ones where the students who are in these credit badges are taking the exact same course that the students are doing uh, who are taking it for a degree program. So what ends up happening is that you might have some students that are in there that are, are taking the course to get a master's degree in something, but you might also have someone in there who's already got a, you know, who's already a doctor of something and getting another master's degree is either A, a financial commitment they don't want to engage with, or B, they don't see the value in doing 30 to 40 hours of, uh, you know, credit hours of, of coursework to get a full master's degree, but they want to get some of the learning that's in there. They want to get uh, some more formal professional learning around a topic that's uh, of importance to them. Um, so creating a, um, you know, providing some of our coursework through these credit badges and then potentially stacking those credit badges to form a micro-credential uh, so that you don't have to get the full master's degree or the full certificate program, but we can package these in a smaller uh, way so that a, uh, an individual um, can um, take a couple of these or three of these. And you can see we, we use two here very specifically because two three unit courses is the minimum that would be required for a micro-credential. Uh, 12 or what essentially 12 credit hours or what essentially would be four three unit courses is the maximum. So if you're trying to put something together that's more than uh, four three unit courses, you really should be looking at the certificate option. Uh, but there's probably a lot of opportunities within your programs to think about how you could package a couple or three courses together to form these um, smaller programs that don't have to go through state certification uh, or state approval uh, like a regular certificate program does or a regular degree program does. 
Um, one of the key things about these four credit ones is they are not eligible for financial aid um, because they're not a state approved program. Even if the student is doing enough units that they would normally qualify for financial aid uh, because these programs don't go through that state accreditation process, um, the student isn't essentially taking courses towards their degree program. Uh, so because of that, they aren't eligible for financial aid. Now, if you're interested in one of these five types of badges, and by interested, I mean interested in actually uh, providing these to your students, to your alumni, to students who might have expressed an interest in your programs, but not really wanting to commit to the full degree option. Um, in order to have these as part of the official system, you have to go through an application process. Um, the application form has three separate parts and depending upon what you're looking to offer, uh, you would do two of those three. So everyone does part one. And then if you're doing an experiential uh, faculty development skills or non-credit, you do part two. If you're doing the four credit ones, you would not do part two, you'd actually do part three. Um, and uh, so the application form is about five pages long. Once you fill it out, it goes to me first as the coordinator of micro-credentials. Um, and approval is sort of a, an odd word to have there, although it's the right word. Uh, but essentially what happens is you and I go back and forth until uh, I think you've answered all of the questions that the people that are below that uh, arrow are going to ask. And, and I try to anticipate the things that they're going to, to be interested in. Um, so once it gets by me, uh, it then goes independent of each other to both the systems academic affairs committee, which is essentially uh, all of the different provosts throughout the system. Uh, so there's six of them right now. And as well to Rabbi Krupka as executive vice president. Uh, and it goes to them independently and they make decisions independent of each other. Uh, and then depending upon what they say, uh, if either one of those two groups, uh, so either uh, the executive vice president or the academic affairs committee uh, have questions or would like revisions to the uh, the proposal, it would then go back to you guys through me and um, we would try to make sure we work through those and then I'd send them back to those two groups again. Once both groups sign off on it, then basically we build it in the system. Um, if it is a non-credit, a skills, experiential, or faculty development, uh, building it in the system can be done in as, as little as 24 to 48 hours. If it is a four-credit option, um, particularly if it's a four-credit micro-credential, we still need to create program codes for them in Banner, and that could take as much as a full semester to get completed. Uh, so if you are considering... Uh, four credit options, either for courses or for uh, full micro credentials. You want to plan at least a semester between when you actually submit your applications and when you want to offer the course. So if I were submitting it today, um, we will guarantee that it will be available by the summer semester. Uh, so again, that full the semester, the spring semester would be that full semester in between. Um, so soon, hopefully by Christmas Eve, um, when you go into Toro One, you'll be able to click on My Sites up in the top corner. And in addition to the Department of Online Ed and some of the other ones that you have, um, being in California, you can see the different ones I've got options to. There will be a micro credentials at Toro option there um, sometime before the end of the academic year, hopefully by the end of the calendar year. Uh, in addition to that, we will eventually have a toro.edu forward slash micro credentials page. And again, the goal for that is by the end of this calendar year. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, you can access the official badging system right now. Uh, so the public page for that official badging system, I've just dropped into the chat there. In addition, all of our non-credit offerings are hosted in a platform called uh, Canvas Catalog. So it's another Instructure uh, platform that uh, the system has purchased. And you can go and take a look at uh, what we're offering there through the next link that I just dropped into the chat there. And uh, seems that we're about quarter after, I'll actually just 
um, pause it there and I won't get into the, the gamification stuff because I know I've done a session on that before. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, feel free to email me uh, either at mbarber at Toro or you can actually just email microcredentials at Toro and it will get to me. Um, and um, basically I can send you a link to the recording on the one about gamification. Uh, so knowing we've got about 15 minutes left, I will pause right now and see if folks have any questions.